Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. All right, I'm going through this again here. Healthcare, education, the environment, Big. international aid, crime, issues affecting all our lives. I will understand British government if it kills me, all right? The more I learn about it, the less, the more confusing it is. All right, so there was the Magna Carta, and so the, the king... Shaped and driven by Parliament. But how did it all begin? What does Parliament do all day, and how do you fit in? Parliament has evolved throughout its long history to become what it is today, changing over time to meet the needs of the people. Two key historical events began this process. In 1215, King John put his seal on Magna Carta and agreed to a list of 63 rules set out by a group of barons. This ensured for the first time that no one, not even the king, was above the law. Fifty years later, Simon de Montfort, for the first time, invited representatives of the towns and shires to his 1265 parliament. These events. Okay, so. So parliament was already a thing prior to the Magna Carta, and there were already barons or lords before the Magna Carta. It's just the Mag Magna Carta made it so the the king couldn't just do whatever he want and and he'd have to at least face some uh, there have to at least be some people who can push back against the king right and so what did parliament do before the magna carta just was it just like a fake the representatives of the towns and shires to his 1265 parliament. Okay. These events established the foundations for the representative democracy we have today, and from this point onwards, the power to make decisions for the nation passed, over time, from the monarch to parliament. Let's take a closer look at the UK parliament today. Parliament is made up of three parts, the House of Commons, the House of Lords, and the Monarch. The House of Commons is the elected Chamber of Parliament. It debates big issues, proposes laws, amends existing ones, and challenges the government's work. There are 650 members of Parliament, or MPs, who each represent a constituency in the UK. They belong to either a political party or are independent, and are elected by constituents of the area they want to represent. The leader of the party that has the most MPs elected after a general election becomes the Prime Minister and heads up the government. Okay, so did it say 650? That's a lot. Who governments work. There are 650 members of... So there are 650 constituencies, meaning like areas around the, the, the UK that all vote for their own individual representative. And that representative can is either a part of a party or it's not aligned. And then the, the party with the most constituencies gets the Prime Ministership. Parliament, or MPs, who each represent a constituency in the UK constituents of the area they want to represent. The leader of the party that has the most MPs elected after a general election so are they, becomes the Prime Minister. Are they minister towns? Who government. decides what the borders they of choose a, a cabinet made up of 20 issue. senior ministers who coordinate each government department's work. Parties not in power are called the opposition. MPs from the opposition and government question the government on policy and proposed laws. The Speaker keeps the House in order by chairing order. these debates. The House of Lords is the second Clear chamber the lobby. and shares the making oh. and shaping of laws with the House of Commons. It has around... Sorry, that's important. Um. ...keeps the House in order by chairing these debates. The House of Lords is the second chamber and shares the making and shaping of laws with the House of Commons. It has around 800 members and it's made up mostly of life peers and also includes hereditary peers and bishops. Lords are selected for their knowledge and experience, and hold government to account by using their expertise to look at laws and issues in detail. The monarch's role is mainly ceremonial. They meet the Prime Minister once a week. Okay, so the House of Lords is... So the House of Commons is sort of... This is how I'm seeing it so far. It's sort of the, the engine of... If you want to call it democracy or the, the government. That... Um, 
that that try and add and pass new things. And then the House of Lords is more of the traditional side of the UK that kind of puts a break on on anything that it it seems like the House of Lords how do I say this in a way that doesn't obviously so my opinion I, I think it's ridiculous that her hereditary person can be um but hey I, look at the US right now. I, I I'm I'm not in a position to brag about uh, a country's politics. But that's that's crazy to me. Okay, let me just say that 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 idea is nuts. I I want to be respectful at the same time. Um, I'm not from the UK, obviously. Um, who you shouldn't care what I think. How how do I backtrack? Uh, so okay. The House of Commons, all elected officials. House of Lords, some elected officials, but a lot of hereditary and and clerk and religious bishop who kind of give a look over before it's passed through. So kind of like akin to a Senate. It, it, it not, might not help you guys to understand what I'm under, trying to understand by saying, but it, it seems like the House of Commons is akin to the uh, Congress and the House of Lords is more akin to the Senate. But senators are also elected. But, you know, the Congress makes the laws and then the Senate can deny them or not. Um, and constituencies are like districts. And so it would be like choosing the prime minister would be like adding up or seeing every, oh, there, there's got to be thousands of districts in the U.S., but adding up every elected official giving a point to whatever, to the party of whatever the party the elected official is, is coming from out of its constituents. And then the president would be whatever party has the most districts voting for a candidate in their party. That's what I'm getting so far. Detail. The monarch's role is mainly ceremonial. They meet the prime minister once a week to hear what's going on in parliament and formally agree every new law. But that's not all. There are also people working behind the scenes who support the work of parliament. Never heard of what? in detail. The monarch's role is mainly ceremonial. They meet the Prime Minister once a week to hear what's going on in Parliament and formally agree every new law. But that's not all. There are also people working behind the scenes who support the work of Parliament. Clerks, librarians, researchers and many more. The government has been elected to run the country, and Parliament holds the government to account for us, the public. But how? Prime Minister's questions and ministerial questions give MPs and Lords the opportunity... Well, the, the Parliament is the government. So the Parliament's to protect from the Parliament? Oh. Prime Minister's questions and ministerial questions give MPs and Lords the opportunity to challenge the government's policies. It's in... Oh, sorry, I'm dumb. I'm stupid. In 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 the room. Okay, I thought he meant in a the general sense. Questions give MPs and Lords the opportunity to challenge the government's policies. It's in these debates that they can share the views of their constituents and the public and how new policies may affect them. Another important way Parliament can scrutinise or look in detail at the work of government is through select committees. Select committees analyse and scrutinise policy. They're made up of either MPs, Lords or a mixture of both. Together, committee members look at a particular subject and make recommendations on improvements. Witnesses with expertise in the area under scrutiny are called to give evidence, which is used to help shape the committee's inquiry. Members of the public, like you, with a view on the subject can also give evidence for consideration. At the end of an inquiry... I can just go in. The committee writes a report with recommendations that the government usually responds to within 60 days. Six. Both houses in Parliament share responsibility for making and shaping laws. But where do laws come from in the first place? A bill is a proposal for a new law or to change oh an existing God. law. Oh, God. Here's a bill. And there's an American video that, like, every American, like, uh, elementary schooler is, is shown and it's like this tacky 70s style looking cartoon and that just brought it back sorry this place a 
bill is a proposal for a new law or to change an existing law and comes from lots of places like governing and opposition parties, public inquiries, civil servants or campaign groups. So how does an idea get turned into a law? Imagine the government wanted to place greater controls over the internet. A proposal called a green paper is published, which presents the government's ideas for future policy. This is open for public discussion, with interested groups like internet service providers and others likely to be affected. Once findings are gathered, a white paper is published, which outlines a firmer plan for government policy. Cabinet ministers must agree whether the proposal is taken forward. Once agreed, a bill is drawn up and the minister responsible for the policy introduces the bill to Parliament for debate. MPs and members of the House of Lords comment on, debate or amend the bill through several stages. And at the end of the process, apart from very rare circumstances, it must be agreed by both houses. It's then passed to the monarch, who gives formal approval or royal assent and the bill becomes law, called an Act of Parliament. When was the last case where there was serious disagreement between the crown and between the monarch and a big bill coming through? Like, has, when's the last time that they've gone be like, OK, we've got this great thing all passed, like and everyone's cheering and then they go and the king or queen is just like, uh, no, nope. Obviously, there would be repercussions to that. It, it, the popul you don't if you're a monarch, you don't want your popularity to go too far down so it's not like especially in a modern age where very little can be hidden um i i think even the monarchy is is certainly not above public scrutiny and so even they have to answer to something um i'm of the believer okay that a country should decide its its government obviously it feels weird critiquing other people's I'm just learning really what am I saying just law called an act of parliament seriously though has there ever been a, a time like that because that would be interesting I'd imagine it hadn't hasn't happened very recently anyways really cool video I would love to see your guys comments on this video especially I know I had a lot of questions and probably didn't absorb everything but that's not a strong anyways all right i'm gonna keep learning about this until i understand it more or at least a comfortable understanding where i'm not at right now and so yeah hope you guys are all doing well see you guys next time